Scotch Bluff man could be facing another prison term after pleading no contest to possessing more than one ounce of methamphetamine. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, a 40-year-old Scotsliff man caught with a large amount of methamphetamine has been found guilty of a charge of possession of a controlled substance with intent to deliver. Brian Ross was arrested after police found nearly 33 grams of meth in his SUV following a shoplifting investigation back in June. He faces a prison sentence ranging from 1 to 50 years when he is sentenced on February 10th. Ross was released from prison back in 2015 after getting sentenced to 18 to 30 months in prison on convictions of a possession of a controlled substance and bribery of a juror. Well, the Nebraska State Patrol has confirmed that a Sunday morning crash on I-80 in the Southern Panhandle has claimed the life of a 57-year-old woman from Boise. The accident occurred near Dix when a semi lost control on the icy roads, crossed the median, and struck a vehicle driven by Beth McCaskill who was pronounced dead at the scene. The Nebraska State Patrol was assisted by the Kimball County Sheriff's Department, the Kimball Fire and Rescue, and Nebraska Department of Transportation crews. I-80 eastbound was closed for roughly three and a half hours as a result of the crash. And two Shadron residents are behind bars and facing serious felony drug charges following the execution of a search warrant on Monday. During the search, police found a large-scale marijuana grow operation more than two ounces of methamphetamine, two ounces of marijuana, and lots of drug paraphernalia. Officers arrested 32-year-old Colette Yardley and 45-year-old Alex Broderick on charges of including possession of a controlled substance, possession with intent to distribute, and felony child abuse. Well, coming up after the break, Bill Boyer's in with your midweek forecast. He's got that right after this on KNEB.TV News. At Platte Valley Bank, we believe it shouldn't cost you money to access your money. That's why we offer free ATMs anytime, anywhere. Whether you are across town or traveling abroad, there won't be an added expense to access the funds in your Platte Valley Bank account. Free ATMs are just one of the great benefits of banking with us. Stop by to talk to one of our friendly associates to discuss what else Platte Valley Bank has to offer. Hey, I've been hanging out here a long time outside of Panhandle Auto Group, and boy, do they have a great selection of vehicles. And their sales team is great to work with, and you can also get your vehicle serviced in detail, too. Welcome to Panhandle Auto. This is Sam Serta, General Sales Manager. It has been our pleasure to serve you for the past two years. At Panhandle Auto, we have a seat for everybody. Whether you need a vehicle for yourself, a son or daughter, our team will go above and beyond to satisfy your needs and even your dreams. So again, thank you from Sam Serta, General Sales Manager at Panhandle Auto, for allowing us to earn your business. At Panhandle Auto, it's time for something different. When you're Arby's, you can do certain things, like load roast beef and curly fries onto a sandwich, add horsey sauce, Arby's sauce, and cheddar cheese sauce on there. Sell them two for six bucks. And when you're Arby's, you can call it the Arbonator. Because if you aren't, Arbonator is a super strange name to just invent. Arby's, we have the meat. This is KNEB.TV weather from the Arby's Weather Center. Arby's, we have the meats. As we look across the region tonight, we're going to be dealing with partly cloudy skies. Temps falling down into the teens once again. Light winds through the night, though, so it's not going to be uh, too bad. We'll call it comfortably cool. How about that overnight? Nice through the weekend. Cooler, I think, by Christmas Day, but... Our snow chances are really in question as we get out to Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. We do see a pattern change coming, but whether that will ultimately lead to snow for us still up in the air. For a morning low yesterday, got to 36 for a high. Nothing in the rain gauge, uh, still just short of 20 inches for the year. Very wet year here across the region. Denver at 43 right now. It's 27 in Laramie. 30 in North Platte, 29 in Norfolk. Pretty uniform across Nebraska, those cold temps again. Just off to our west in the high country into the low to mid teens. Here we have upper 20s and low to even to mid 30s out there. A couple upper 30s too. Torrington at 38, Cheyenne 37, Wheatland 37 as well. Those strong winds, high wind warnings and high wind watches still out 
for that area of western Wyoming. And as we look at wind chills because of those winds in the 20s uh, in a couple of low 30s out there. All in all, not bad in the wind chill department. For tonight, just partly cloudy skies. You'll see a few of those clouds come in here in the low lying areas and then we'll see maybe a thicker bank of some clouds possible at times tomorrow. But generally speaking, partly cloudy temperatures overnight fall down into the upper teens and low to even a couple of mid 20s out there. Then for tomorrow, we start the day with partly cloudy skies, bring in a few clouds off and on. That's about it. A touch cooler tomorrow, I think, than where we were today. Thanks in a little bit to some of that upper level uh, winds out of the northwest bringing in a little cooler air. Although we're getting pretty nitpicky, there's not much going on. Highs tomorrow in the low 40s. Very nice uh, here for uh, this time of year. So partly cloudy skies overnight. We'll call it 17 for a low. Tomorrow we're going to be dealing with partly cloudy skies again. Two fours on the board back to back to make it 44 in our seven day forecast. Temps stay really nice right on through Monday. Then by Christmas Eve and into Christmas Day, you'll see temps fall uh, back into the upper 30s and low 40s. So it's going to be cooler for Christmas Day. That's just about normal, though, at 39 for this time of year. We are keeping snow chances off the board, although we'll watch the end of this forecast Wednesday into Thursday, possibly uh, for some precip chances here in the region. Right now, though, they're just too far uh, out too many models disagreeing uh, to be able to precisely throw in uh, th snow chances out uh, seven days into the forecast. Behold the Arbonator. Behold the roast beef and cheddar cheese sauce. Behold the horsey sauce, Arby's sauce, and curly fries. Beholding two of them for only $6. Arby's, we have the meat. Fly United Airlines, operated by SkyWest with Western Nebraska Regional Airport. United is dedicated to going the extra mile for you with daily flights to and from Denver and a commitment to excellent service. Reserve your flight today. Plus, all United miles can be earned and redeemed with your flight. Finally, while visiting Western Nebraska Regional Airport, Hertz Thrifty Car Rental is there for your car rental needs. Make life easier, relax, and get on board with Western Nebraska Regional Airport. Changing leaf colors means yard work. Your friends at Tri-City Stormwater wants to remind you of the proper way to dispose of fallen leaves. Leaves make great mulch for trees and bushes and compost for future gardens. The city also has yard waste bins so they can dispose of all your leaves at the city compost facility. Always keep your leaves out of the gutters. Not only do they cause clogging and flooding, they can pollute our waterways by causing nutrient overload. So keep your yard looking good and your drinking water safe because it's our water, our responsibility. Hey, Grandma, thanks for all the gifts. Oh, I'm so glad you like them. I'm really sorry I couldn't make it. Yeah, we are too. Set timer for 15 minutes. Mom, Dad, say hi to Grandma. Hey, oh, hi. Mom. Oh, miss you guys. We're making your famous mashed potatoes. Set the crock pot on high. Wow, technology sure has changed. Everyone, say hi to Grandma. Hi, Grandma. When a strong, reliable network really counts, let our Allo family worry about the technology that keeps you connected. Welcome back. A Scotchluff man and his brother have been arrested in connection to a December 11th shooting in Cheyenne. Police say 26-year-old Isaac James of Scotchbluff and his 27-year-old brother Terrence James of Cheyenne were arrested without incident this week on suspicion of shooting 35-year-old Gennaro Bohorquez after a dispute over a drug deal. Police say the man sustained life-threatening injuries in the assault and the case remains under investigation by Cheyenne police. Well, the writing was on the wall for the arrest of a Scotchloaf man who was arrested early Tuesday morning on burglary and criminal mischief charges. 25-year-old Christopher Torres is accused of scrawling his initials and a lewd note for police on the walls of the Northern Heights Professional Plaza on Valley View Drive. Court documents say that Torres told police that he gained access to the building through an unlocked door and was later found hiding in a locked room in the office complex. He made his first appearance on the charges today in Scottsbluff County Court. And dozens of people who helped respond to the 2019 Nebraska floods are getting honored for work saving lives and rescuing stranded neighbors. Governor Pete Ricketts and First Lady Suzanne Shore presented awards yesterday to individuals and groups that contributed to the effort. Special accolades went to James Wilkie, a Columbus farmer who died trying to save a stranded motorist from floodwaters, the Nebraska National Guard, 
and a group of firefighters and volunteers whose airboat capsized as they worked to rescue a family from their home. Ricketts also honored airboat owners, a search and rescue task force, and 45 individuals who assisted in various ways. Well, straight ahead, we'll head on over to the Panhandle Humane Society to meet their featured Pet of the Week. We'll meet Shadow right after this. Next Gen Outfitters, where the adventure begins and the tradition continues. When it comes to an online retailer, this is the new standard in authentic hunt, camp, and shoot. Born from over a century of outdoor experience, your online retailer, Next Gen Outfitters. Why do we work all hours of the night? Head towards challenges instead of turning away and work together to solve the toughest problems so you can enjoy the little things and all the big moments life has to offer. Tri-State and our family of electric cooperatives. Brighter, stronger, better together. carrying fame. Get your Husker Visa debit card so you can take the game with you. Free with first free checking. Welcome back. For this week's featured pet of the week, we meet Shadow, a great cat who needs a great forever home. Plus, whoever adopts Shadow will also receive a 25 dirt. She is one of our cats that we have here. She's an absolute sweetheart, very fluffy. She's good with other animals. Um, she's $50 and in that adoption fee, it covers her vaccinations, her spay and neutering, microchipping. <laughs> a, a loving home. Any home that absolutely loves cats or has like experience with other cats or even dogs any pet, because she, she's a really lovely girl. I mean, she's calm, a little playful. She does like her moments alone, but she, anyhow. Plus, whoever adopts Shadow will also receive a $25 Murdoch's gift card so they can start spoiling her right away. To meet Shadow or any of the cats and dogs they have available for adoption, you can head on over to the Panhandle Humane Society Monday through Saturday during normal business hours. Well, straight ahead, we'll take a peek at what's happening around the region on your community calendar. We'll have that right after this. Sometimes events in life are planned. Others, a happy surprise. No matter what life change you're navigating, whether you're getting married or just want a bigger yard for your pup, find a home that fits. First National Bank North Platte. Start your mortgage pre-approval today. Retirement. A new season in life where you can change how you live it. And something easier, convenient, that feels just right. When it's time, find a home that fits. First National Bank North Platte. Start your mortgage pre-approval today. My kids eat vegetables never, but they eat runs of sandwiches, which have cabbage, which is a vegetable, which makes me the mom of the year. When it comes to helping local folks with the loans and financial advice they need, we don't horse around. Our only goal is to help you and your family achieve your financial goals with the right loans and savings products. So if you want to bank with people that care about you and your financial needs, stop by or give us a call. First State Bank. We're big on you. Member FDIC. Online at fsbcentral.com. Well, let's take a peek at what's happening on your midweek community calendar.
That's a look at today's community calendar, brought to you by First State Bank, honoring those who give back. Nominate your community champion at fsbcentral.com. This chair is way too big. It's perfect for us. This one's tiny. That's because it's mine. Hey, this chair is just right. This bed is way too hard. It's perfect for me. This bed is way too soft. Ah, uh, just what I needed. This bed is just right. So come on over to Leaf Heads. At Platte Valley Bank, we offer loans with competitive rates and quick decisions from our experienced lenders. Our team works hard to get to know you and your business. From ag to auto, home loans and everything in between, we're here to help. Stop by Platte Valley Bank or apply online to find the loan that is right for you today. And finally tonight, former Democratic U.S. Senate candidate Chris Janicek of Omaha is officially running for the seat currently held by Republican Ben Sass. During a Scotts Bluff listening tour back in September, Janicek announced unofficially on KDB.TV that he would be making the run, saying he'll offer accessible, open and honest representation in the Senate. The way we're handling it right now is not working and it is affecting all of us. Uh, we are all one state and so things that don't go on in Scotts Bluff go on in Ogallala and things that don't go on in Ogallala go on in Grand Island and things that don't go on in Omaha go on in Scotts Bluff. So we are one giant state and it is my job to bring the people of this state together and to work for the better good for all of us. One other Democratic candidate, Dennis Frank Masek, has already filed to run for the seat. Janicek last ran in 2018 and lost in the Democratic primary to Jane Raybould, who failed to unseat Republican U.S. Senator Deb Fischer. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you here next time.